Hi everyone. So right now what we're going to do is talk a little bit about gouges. This is probably um, the area where I get the most questions and it's hard to answer them succinctly because there are so many variables. And so I understand when people want to know like what's the best bang for their buck if they had to get like a starter kit or where to start or how to think about it. I hope to give you a little bit of insight into why you would choose certain ones and how to best spend your money. So thanks for tagging along. So let's talk about different kinds of gouges, sort of how I would group them. Mind you, this is going to be different for people doing different types of work. Since I tend to do more sculptural, highly texturized work, my gouge set might look a little bit different than someone else who's doing maybe sign making or something like that. It's going to look completely different. So this is a sample of what would be in my tool roll. And if anyone's wondering, I'll probably get questions. This is a tool roll from Jason Thigpen at Texas Heritage Woodworks. I highly recommend it. Super durable. I love the colors it comes in. It's treated me so well and it's given me a really safe way to transport my tools when I have to teach. We've got a few different things going on just to make it easy and to sort of break up the pieces as we go along. We're going to talk about straight gouges. So they're straight along their entire length like this from the handle all the way to the edge. We're going to talk about long bent so you can see how along the entire shaft of the tool, this is a gradual bend in it, which is different from a spoon gouge or spoon bent, which is straight along the shaft and the sort of working end of it here up to the edge is the part that's curved here. Then we also have straight gouges that have a double hoop. So a hoop here and a hoop here is what that's referring to. And this is for heavy removal. There's also, I don't know if you can see it, there's a piece of leather that's in here and that helps to absorb the shock of hitting this with a mallet. So these are my V chisels. Obviously one is larger than the other. Um, they're both at 60 degrees and typically V chisels come in various degrees of the V here at the end. And usually those are offered in 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. So depending on what that degree is will denote how open that channel is that's created when carving. I typically use these for decoration, so creating lines, creating texture, that kind of thing. They're also used a lot in relief carving. This dog leg gouge um, by Hans Carlson is also known by swan neck gouge or some other similar name. And really what's important about this one is the crank, so the extreme angle here on the, on the shaft that allows for a lot of leverage and it allows access into some sort of tight spaces that aren't usually accessible with other gouges. These also have a sweep on them and can have various sweeps depending on what maker. And typically with something that's a specialty tool like this, you don't have a lot of options in terms of the sweep because it's so specialized. The Hans Carlson ones do come in different sweeps um, and I would like something that's a little less of a steep sweep here. Because I'm using this on the bottoms of bowls most times. And that's where these come in handy because they're really good at negotiating where grain is coming in and conflicting grain coming in from different directions. And I don't use it much, but when I do need it, it comes in extremely handy. So let's talk about gouge sizes. I own a lot of Swiss made file gouges. They're fairly lightweight. They have a comfortable handle and they come in a lot of different sizes that are more often than not available through Woodcraft. They have a great website to see what sweeps and sizes are there, what they look like, and it makes it a lot easier for me to get what I need when I need it. So I'm going to be referring to the file Swiss made system, which is a little bit different than other systems. So just keep that in mind. So when I say 5L35, what's happening here is this number five refers to the sweep or how curved this end is. So a one would be flat, a three would be a little bit more, a five even more, seven, nine, and so on. The L refers to long bent. So that means that it's bent all along here. The 35 refers to the length from edge to edge, not along the curvature, but in a straight line from here to here. A five L16, it's the same sweep as this one, same long bent,
but it's only 16 millimeters across here. This is a 3 and this is an 11. So this is almost flat and this is, has some extreme curvature to it. So let's talk about what groups of gouges are used for particular projects. Nothing is off limits to me for bowls and sculpture. If it's going to create the shape that I want, it's getting used. But what I find is that there's some patterns here. For sculpture, usually I'm trying to get rid of a lot of material very quickly. So more often than not, I'm going to be using a mallet. So that automatically puts me in another space where I'm typically using these tools. They're bigger. Bigger work, bigger tool. Makes sense. But that's not to say that I haven't used these on bowls. I have. But just sort of maybe in a limited capacity. Whereas all the rest of these I have used consistently with bowls. The ones that I use the most with bowls are these. They're sort of the mid-range, long bent, the five and the seven. Sort of the, the middle of the road so to speak, in terms of texture anyway. Maybe 80% of the bowls that I've produced thus far have been finished with. When I get more into anything more highly texturized, you're looking at a deeper sweep. That can be something like this, which is a 915, or its counterpart over here, which is one sweep step up, and it's an 11. This is another straight tool. So the limitation with this tool is that it's not bent so that it really can only fit into a limited amount of spaces. This sorby here, that's double hooped. So what I would typically use this for is like in a shrink pot. So if I've augered out the middle there and I still have a lot of material to remove, then I'm gonna be using this. Then there's something like this, a lot smaller compared to the file, compared to this oldie that I have. So of course I'm not gonna try and rough out a bowl with this for obvious reasons. This is more of a finish tool. It's got a low sweep, so it's gonna leave less of a dramatic texture. The handle is short, so it's not made for leverage. All of these things sort of point it towards a finish tool. I also wanna sort of impart that I will not be giving you a specific list of tools that I think are going to work for you all the time. Usually what happens is if you pick the middle of the road in terms of the sweep, um, in terms of the width, that's probably gonna be the most flexible tool for you if you don't quite know what it is that you're gonna be making or you don't quite know what feels good to you yet because you just started. I think it's great to start off with one tool sort of in the middle of the road, learn how to sharpen it, really test its limits, and then move on and get more tools. I think so often we wanna be fed that perfect toolkit so that we can buy it all and then just go for it. But I don't really think that that's the most efficient or effective method. So what I hope to do here is to teach you a little bit more about the tools so you can make a better informed decision about what fits you, what fits your comfort level, what fits your projects, what fits your budget. I also think that the absolute most useful thing that you can do when learning about gouges is to learn how to sharpen them properly. It's amazing how much more efficient the process becomes and clean of a cut you can get when you learn how to sharpen well. And so I hope that you'll join me in parts two, three, and four of this gouge video series. And I'll be exploring the different components of the gouges, so their handles and how they're constructed, texture and how different gouges create different textures, and then also how to sharpen them. So I hope that you'll join me for the next videos in the series and hopefully learn some more about these tools and get going on your own projects. Thanks for following along.